Hello again everybody, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about a video that came out that Dave on the other side of the camera had uh, sent me and was asking about it and it's about a doctor who did a video and we'll link it below, is it possible to overdose on protein? He was there to give some New Year's tips in terms of diet. Um, and for those of you wondering, no, I'm not trying to promote sweater vests, uh, Argyle sweater vests particularly as being more anabolic or anything. I had a something I had to be at earlier today, so that's why I'm dressed like this for this video. But anyways, I digress. I only say that because questions will come up. Um, this doctor is a cardiologist. Um, was discussing it, and the again the topic they were discussing is it possible to overdose on protein? Now, one going into this, you know, and after watching the video, one thing I'll point out is it's always assumed that MDs are experts in nutrition. They're not. They have very little training in it. Anything they would know about it per se in depth would be done through independent research, not necessarily through medical school. So that's number one. So I'm going to go through what he was talking about in the video. First and foremost, is it possible to overdose on protein? Well, yes, you could overdose on water too. You know, there's a lot of things. So that's kind of a a, a silly basis and you know some of the things he talked about were one thing he said right off the bat was protein has a lot of fat in it well that in and of itself doesn't make any sense because protein and fat are two separate macronutrients now I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he meant there are protein sources that have a lot of fat let's say you get a ribeye steak for instance it's protein rich but it has a lot of fat but he didn't disclose that so I don't know like I said we'll, we'll give him a mulligan on that one that, that that doesn't make any sense though just to be clear protein having a lot, it's just not, it's physiologically impossible, they're two different macronutrients. Um, he then quoted the lipid hypothesis, basically just saying, you know, excess fat leads to heart disease, so on and so forth. Here's the thing, um, and when I, what, any macronutrient in excess, okay, with a lack of physical activity can cause problems, okay, let's just leave it at that. It doesn't make sense to just isolate fat and say fat has this uh, deep causal relationship, um, because you could say the same if you do if you have excess carbohydrates as well, whatever it is that results in this uh, caloric surplus with a lack of physical activity over a long period of time. That's going to be problematic no matter what. So fat isn't special in that it's, it's more problematic in that sense, um, especially saturated fat. To say that is just not true. So um, context matters, you know what I mean? So that, that I wanted to cover too. He also went on to assume that somebody on a high protein diet also is not eating a lot of fiber. Now, again, context matters here. Why is that assumption made that if somebody's taking in what he would deem a high protein, which was not, by the way, narrowly defined. We need to define what qualifies as high protein. Um, so to assume that that must equate low fiber in the diet, again, the, the, it, you're making a lot of assumptions and not giving any context. So that doesn't really make sense. Um, you know, we can make a case where we could say a diet low in protein and too much fiber is bad too. You know, there's, you can go a lot of different ways with it. So you should introduce context if you're going to do uh, a segment like this because it's, it's just going to lead to people misunderstanding. Um, he then went on to talk about osteoporosis and um, kidney health. And the studies or where you hear about kidney health and problems when it comes to high protein, those are based on people with pre-existing kidney conditions. Um, this doesn't come from research on otherwise healthy populations eating protein somewhere in the realm of about one gram per pound of body weight um, or 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, you know, somewhere in that range, give or take, there, that evidence doesn't exist. Um, it's always invoked that there's strain and stress on the kidneys and so on and so forth, and this somehow makes high protein diets bad. That, that really, that, that, that research, again, does not exist on otherwise healthy individuals. And in terms of calcium being leached out of the bone, and causing osteoporosis as a result of high protein diet. Again, that makes assumptions too, and some of which are not true. For instance, having more protein and assuming your calcium and vitamin D levels are normal is actually a good thing. In fact, there's a recent study, I'm holding my hands, made some uh, notes here. Uh, calcium homeostasis and bone metabolic responses to high protein diets during energy deficit in healthy young adults, a randomized control trial. Now, what this study did is it looked at protein intake at varying levels. Uh, from 0.8 grams per kilogram of body uh, weight, 1.6, and 2.4. So 2.4 is going to be a little bit more than 1 gram per pound of body weight, just for context for those of you who don't do metric system. Um, the length of the study was 31 days, and the results were uh, protein had no effect on either urinary calcium excretion or the amount of calcium retained. Uh, these data demonstrate that short-term consumption of high-protein diets does not disrupt calcium home homeostasis and is not detrimental to skeletal integrity. Now, this was a nice study because, again, they compared um, varying amounts of protein intake. And 
The other thing you can maybe criticize about it is it's only 31 days. But there's some other research, which I'm going to link below, that actually demonstrates the benefits of a nutrient-dense diet that is also rich in calcium, vitamin D, and protein, and it actually having positive effects on bone health. Um, sp specifically, when you combine that with um, physical activity in the form of strength training, that actually improves bone health. Now, to be fair to the doctor, he did uh, include a couple things. He did say that athletes would probably require um, more protein than the recommended daily allowance. That's true. He didn't give a number, though. He just said more. That's true, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. He also said that the same of the elderly because of what I mentioned, bone health. So there's kind of a paradox there where on one hand he's saying it causes um, osteoporosis and issues with bone health via you know, metabolic acidosis, then goes on to say in populations such as the elderly who are the most susceptible to osteoporosis to actually take in more protein. So again, it's kind of all over the place. Um, so that really doesn't make sense. He also said the same of pregnant women too, needing to increase protein intake. But again, it wasn't defined as what that protein intake should be just above what the RDA is, uh, which I agree with. And there are always other factors to consider when we're talking about how much protein someone should take in. Goal, body weight, activity level, all of these things play a role. So you can't really just throw up a quick video with a, a news reporter who's, you know, uh, Googling or goggling, whatever the word I'm thinking of, she was kind of, you know, bubbly over the information that she was getting from him. You have to give this context. These other factors do matter. Um, and the satiating effect of protein is such that, and we're going to, I'm going to link another video below that we did. It's on how much protein can you digest at once. You know, there's, there's thought to be some magic number out there, which again, would preclude, would presume that these other variables don't exist, such as body weight goals, how much protein have you had in a previous meal, what's your other macronutrient intake, what's your gastric emptying rate. There's a lot of things to consider. So there's not a magic number. And the reality is, is that protein is so filling that you, you'd really have trouble eating enough protein to reach that point. Okay? That's the point. So we'll link that video below. Um, and also, as far as bone health, the other thing that's being assumed is that all proteins are acid forming and yada, yada, yada. And the thing is about foods is that some foods are acid forming, some are alkaline forming. Some are also amphoteric, which meaning they can act as an acid or a base within your body. So it really depends. And also, again, in the context of a nutrient-dense diet where fruits, vegetables, um, other healthy grains, starches, things like that are present, these aren't really things you should worry about. And if your pH got that far out of whack, you'd die, okay? Your body regulates your pH very, very closely. Um, your body has a lot of homeostatic mechanisms to control pH. One of them would be pulling calcium out of your bone. Again. If your diet is rich in calcium and vitamin D, you don't, it, it's not a concern, okay? So th th that's just not it. Um, he did do a good job of not bashing um, protein powders, which is common amongst doctors. There's this assumption that powder and a pro uh, protein in a powdered form, i.e. a supplement such as whey, for instance, is somehow different than a whole food source. It's food. It just happens to be in a powdered form. So kudos to him for not doing that because doctors will often do that. Somebody will walk into their office and... Doc, I smoke, I drink, and uh, you know I'm taking these supplements, these vitamins and uh, protein powders, and uh, I've got these problems. And sure enough, the doctor will say, "It's the supplements. <laughs> Never mind the excess drinking and smoking. That's that's the problem. It's the supplements." So oftentimes you'll hear that, and it introduces a boogeyman that's not there, and it's done from a place of ignorance because if you actually knew what you're talking about, you'd know that that's just not the case. It's it's food. Okay, that's the way to think of it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what he did. I, I didn't want to come on here and just bash the guy. I, I, I'm sure his intentions are good. Um, he's obviously accomplished in his area. I believe he's from the University of Texas, I want to say. They said UT. I was assuming Texas, but maybe University of Tennessee or someone, someone else who comes from UT that could be a UT that's not Texas or Tennessee. Don't get mad at me. Um, but I, I think he's the head of cardiology. So clearly he's accomplished something in that area. But again, when it comes to nutrition, this assumption that MDs are all knowing, it's, it's just not the case. It's not to say that none of them know nutrition. Some of them probably very well do, but it's because they've done reading independent of their training in medical school. Um, so rest assured, you're not going to overdose on protein, okay? Um, again, it's, it's very unlikely just because of the satiating factors. And that being said, there's no reason to eat a ton more protein beyond your goals. You know, if you're shooting for a gram, gram and a half of protein per pound of body weight, there's no reason to say, well, if a gram is good, why don't I go to three grams per pound of body weight? That, that, that's, that's, that's false, too. You know, there's too much of a good thing. You don't need that much, okay? So you should just focus on, on hitting your macronutrient goals, the amount of carbohydrates, protein, and fat you need within a given day to reach your goals. And we have a video on that that kind of helps you guide you in that sense. 
But generally speaking, there's not a, a one-size-fits-all amount of macronutrients for people at a given body weight to get to a given place. That's just an oversimplification. It doesn't exist. There are some variables amongst people. So um, I hope I covered this and answered this question. Um, again, it's not, it's not here to bash the, the good doctor. It's just to maybe spend a little bit more time elaborating on some of the fallacies that were in there and on some of the things he got right to give some context to those things. So I hope this answered it. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the comment section of the video below. Happy to answer them. If you like the video, please like it with a thumbs up. Also, you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thank you for watching.